Hi, my name is James Barry. I'm a full-time professional photographer and over the years I have been taught and learnt various tricks and tips which have helped me with my portrait photography. And I'm going to share some of those with you now. If you like what you see, maybe consider going to our website and looking at the details of the courses we run here at the studio in Sussex. During this video clip I'm going to talk specifically about the lighting required for indoor portraits when the only equipment you have got available is your camera. It is possible to get very good photographs just with simple window light. But if you're going to do this, you need to turn off the flash gun on your camera. You also need to set it in such a mode that it can have a slow shutter speed. This might be a, a night mode or on something like aperture priority. The shutter speed is going to drop because the light levels are going to be quite low. But this won't matter if you support the camera, either on a tripod if you've got one, or even just on a chair. It's also a very good idea, if it's possible, to tether the camera to your computer. So as you take the photographs, you can see the photograph on a large screen and make adjustments accordingly. It also involves the model an awful lot more because they can see what's going on without the need for them to have to move. I'm going to show you a, show you a series of photographs where they have been taken with the light coming from different angles. So if you want to replicate this, you'll need to move the position of the camera and the model to relation to the window to make sure that the light falls on them at different angles. Let's look at our first photograph and analyse what's actually happening here. This is using something called butterfly lighting, which is where the light is going straight onto the model. The model is looking straight into the window and the, the light is coming from behind the camera. Now this is a very typical lighting used in fashion, but if we want a proper lovely portrait photograph of the person, it's really not the right place to start. Whilst it's flattering because the light goes into the, the back of any crow's feet or any, any lines they have on their face, it doesn't really give a, a character image. To do that we need to have a direction of light. A direction of light is so important if we're going to try and have a photograph that really has a bit of an impact, a bit of wow factor. In this second image the light is coming from the side but the light source is far too high in relation to our subject. We might have to stand the subject up or raise them to make sure the light is coming onto them at a better angle. The problem we have when the light is too high is we get some very, very dark shadows at the top of the eyes caused by the eyebrows and this is known in the trade as raccoon lighting. We can't see into the eyes. In any good portrait photograph we want to be able to look into the subject's eyes and we can't do that in this situation. In this picture the light source is too low and this is known as Dracula lighting because we get the same effect with candlelight. The nose shadow goes up the cheek, which looks very strange and very weird. If we want to create a spooky effect, this is how we do it. But if we want to create something that is pleasant to look at, then we need to make sure the light source is higher. Now here's a photograph where the light source is at about the right height. We can tell that because we've got a reflection of that light source in the person's eyes. If you haven't got a reflection, then it's a good indication that the light source is not in the right place. With portrait photography, looking straight into the camera is deemed to be quite boring and doesn't give us the impact that we require. So we're going to ask the model to tip their head slightly to one side or the other. But which way to go? Well, on this image, they're pointing, the uh, pointing their nose slightly towards the light source to our left as we look at the photograph. Now this means that the narrow side of the face, the side on the left, is the side that is lit. The side on the right is the one in shadow. That is known as the broad side because the actual width of that cheek is actually larger than, than the narrow side. You can control the amount of shadow that there is on this side by bringing something white up close to the model. 
Without anything there, it will be quite dark. But if you get something like a, a sheet of polystyrene, a large piece of paper, and slowly move it in towards the subject, then you'll find the reflection of the light off that piece of paper or, or object actually pushes light back into that side of the face. We can get a lovely effect by doing this and far more natural than using a second light source. This image here is broadlit. This is where we've asked the model to turn their face away from the light source and so the broad side of the face is the one that has the light on it and the narrow side is the one in shadow. This is very unflattering. It makes the face look far more podgy and far fatter than if we do narrow lighting. So always ask your model to point towards the light source and not away from it. You'll get much better photographs. If you have got a second light source available, consider putting this behind the model so it lights their hair. Here's an example where we've used a hair light to really lift the blonde hair of our model. Here's an example where we've turned that light off. You can see the difference is quite dramatic. It really, the hair light really gives the hair body and, and, and shows it off and improves our photograph quite considerably. Just another few tips. Make sure that the, the model tips their head slightly. A tipped head is far more interesting than one that is actually bolt upright. Also make sure they have got one shoulder slightly nearer the camera than the other. All these make quite a lot of difference. By having a tethered camera and looking at the results on your computer straight away, you can very easily get the model to try out different poses and come to the conclusion yourself as to which one that you actually like. Well, I hope you've enjoyed watching this video clip. There are more details on our website, as I've mentioned, and good luck with your photography. The great thing, of course, with digital is playing doesn't cost us anything. Thank you.